Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are back today in Exotic Astrology with a very uninteresting topic. <laughs> it's uninteresting but yet very interesting. It's on the movie Adi Purush. Uh, well, I made a post on Instagram like two weeks back around. Uh, many people were asking, right, that should we ban this movie? What should we do? Should we... Let this movie go. Uh, what else, right? What should we do? Uh, what should be our reaction? Well, in that post, I said, you know, it's not much use uh, of banning such movies. But what is important is for us to understand how should we see this uh, from a spiritual perspective. So, for example, in the Vedic scriptures, the lot of knowledge, you know, there's like the Vedas, Upanishads, the Puranas, the, the like Sutras, Yantras, Mudras, Tantras, there are Mantras, and then there are Itihasas, there are like the Shruti, Smritis, so much knowledge is there. But there's one secret which people don't know, is that there is a password to all this. You know what that password is? Imagine... You go to a system which is like you know encrypted there's a very high level say high security password it's like nobody can even dream to break that uh, but imagine you go to a place where you can see all the things which are protected and you actually feel that you have broken the encryption and you have actually got access but you still don't get access which means even though you have everything, you still can't uh, enjoy uh, that or you still can't benefit yourself from that. How, how incredible the encryption is. Just believe, just, just imagine if there was a system. Well, but what we don't know is that there is a system like that. Very highly, highly, highly encrypted. And that system is the knowledge from the scriptures, which means... The scriptural knowledge is readily available for everyone, for anybody and everybody to study and understand and to elevate themselves. But there's a password. There's a very important password. What is that? The password is you have to study that under the guidance of a guru and the guru's blessings are required for you to understand and inculcate those lessons in your lifestyle in a way that everybody is benefited and most importantly including you okay why because lord krishna says this in the gita tad vidhi pranipate na pari prashne na sevaya upadekchanti te jnanam jnani nastatva darshinaha Lord Krishna in this verse emphasizes the importance of a bona fide spiritual master a guru who actually who has actually seen the truth and uh, lord krishna says tadvidhi pranipatena that first you should render some service render some seva humbly and then inquire from the uh, from the spiritual master okay and as you know there are gurus at different levels there is you know pat pradarshita guru who actually shows us the way to some spiritual community who introduces us to some spiritual community and then there is Shiksha Guru. Shiksha Guru is uh, a very senior Guru who gives you knowledge, who gives us the divine knowledge and we understand uh, the scriptural teachings and we inquire from them in regards to how should we apply them in our life. Okay. And then there is uh, the Diksha Guru. So whenever scriptures talk of Guru, they primarily mention they indicate the diksha guru but not necessarily it can be your shiksha guru or diksha guru primarily these two gurus okay the diksha guru is one who initiates us into a bona fide uh, succession okay bona fide guru shishya parampara which comes directly from god so and then there is another guru the fourth guru who is known as chaitya guru who, who is none other than god himself parmatma in the heart okay so the four-handed vishnu form parmatma which is an expansion of shiro dakshai vishnu he resides in our heart always not exactly in the heart but in the region of the heart okay <laughs> okay so <clears throat> what we need to understand is that 
we may read so many things we may see movies we may do n number of things but if we do not approach a bona fide guru and we do not learn the scriptures learn doesn't mean just memorize maga by heart but try to understand if we do not do that in the association of a bona fide guru then what happens is we we get the knowledge but it's very superficial okay as the scriptures explain it's like licking the bottle of honey from outside i wish there was a honey bottle <laughs> so it's like licking the bottle of honey from outside imagine this delicious honey is there so sweet imagine may not be in kali yuga but let's still imagine you know like uh, fake honey <laughs> <laughs> or original you know like 100% pure like conditions apply so imagine you are like you know licking the bottle of honey from outside what happens you and it's and it's so weird that you might believe that oh yeah this this is actually the taste of honey but imagine the difference between the honey and the bottle where, where which which you are licking which you out of illusion thing that no actually this is honey okay but actually it's not so therefore whenever you uh, whenever we see you know videos on ramayana and mahabharat you know there are so many people who speak uh, from um, from so many texts you know from so many books from so many uh, like there are so many writers who write but what we fail to understand is that they might have not learnt it from a bona fide source from a bona fide guru shishya parampara because of which their knowledge will benefit us only at a theoretical level okay which means if we uh, learn the ramayana or the mahabharata or bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam outside of a guru shishya parampara it will benefit us no doubt there is absolutely no doubt because the divine knowledge is very pure it will benefit anyone and everyone but it will at best make us a nice human at at the best okay which, which is also very temporary because when things are difficult that niceness is not there anymore right but when we learn from a guru from a bona, bona fide source then what happens is we we not only just learn it theoretically but the guru empowers us through his divine power and then that knowledge reaches our heart it transforms our heart and how do you know that it has transformed our, your heart well uh, your materialistic cravings will go away okay so your bad habits will go away this is one of the first symptom of spiritual progress your bad habits your sinful habits primarily your sinful habits go away if you are lazy then you stop being lazy if you eat too much uh, you don't eat too much if you are eating like you know meat then many people most of the people they leave meat uh, then if you are like you know drinking smoking then that is gone if you if you watch pornography that goes okay if you are very rash in dealings you become very civilized you know so there are so many uh, bad habits which we we have encountered within us by the association of materialistic people in general okay so these habits will go away number 1 and then number 2 is you will want to do the spiritual practices more and more okay shrimad bhagavatam gives these uh, three symptoms of spiritual progress it says imagine a person who is very hungry so what happens when he comes and there's a delicious plate of food waiting for him when he starts eating what happens his hunger goes away so that going away of hunger is like materialistic cravings desires habits going down okay but then what is the second thing that happens the second thing is he likes to eat the food he eats the food more and more and more he delights he enjoys the food right so which means uh, we will want to do spiritual practices more and more and more and more and more and that's that that is a very important symptom because many times when people do spiritual practices they just think oh now now my materialistic desires have reduced i have become very spiritual uh, i am elevating myself right uh, well not necessarily because 
material desires may go away temporarily for some time but do you have the second symptom which is you know your desire to do more spiritual practices is increasing to to do further spiritual practices is it increasing if yes then great you are in the right track so if you are chanting like one mantra then you next uh, after a month you want to chant like you know two two malas like two into 108 times okay now after four months you like to chant four then eight malas 16 malas 32 malas like this <coughs> Now, do you want to do more fasting? You want to do more austerities? You follow Ekadashi. Earlier, you were only following Nirjal. Now, you are following every Ekadashi. Then, you are doing us uh, Ekadashi with fruits. Then, you are doing every Ekadashi Nirjal. I know so many people who do uh, every Ekadashi fasts, but uh, not so many that I know that does, you know, every Ekadashi Nirjal. Okay. Most of the people I know they do. Nirjal fasting only on Nirjal Ekadashi. But what I'm trying to tell you is like suppose you used to read Bhagavad Gita half an hour a day. Now you want to read one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, sometimes six hours. <laughs> so this is the second symptom. And the third symptom is when a person eats and he feels happy, his cravings go away, his hunger goes down, he has eaten full, then what happens? He goes to sleep, right? <laughs> <laughs> no that happens when we do overeating but when we have eaten to our best capacity and our food is not like excessively rajasic or you know like tamasic especially then what happens is we feel very positive we want to go and do some work okay we go and want to do some heavy lifting some weight lifting some exercise or we like to walk or we like to go and do our office work whatever it is so this is the third symptom where we not only are satisfied and happy, but we want to distribute this happiness to others. Okay. So you want to talk about the Bhagavad Gita to your friend, to your family member. Uh, doesn't mean they will listen, but you still want to do it. <laughs> right. So when you do this, then what happens is uh, you, you are fueling the other two characteristics the first two symptoms okay the third one fuels the second and the second fuels the first you know and all of them fuels each other okay <clears throat> so therefore uh, whenever we see such you know movies uh, of course in india many people are disappointed why have they portrayed you know uh, Hanumanji in such a derogatory way you know in uh, whatever I mean the, that that's all over the internet that we, you can watch some so in, anywhere else but what we have to understand is that these characters who play these roles you know, they may they may but most likely in most of the cases they are not uh, like anybody who plays the role of Hanumanji he has to be a devotee of Lord Ram in real life first. If he's not that, how can how can he or she or anybody play the role? I, I mean, if, if somebody wants to play the role of Shabri in Ramayana, that lady has to be a devotee of Sri Ramachandra. Otherwise, she cannot play that role. It is not possible. I mean, how can you pretend? I mean, because... Unless you are a devotee of Lord Ram, you cannot understand how great that is. Anything else? <laughs> right. So, therefore, whenever somebody is playing these roles, uh, then it, it is very essential that we have this mood of being a servant of God. Otherwise, if we do not have that, then it is just like a mere... Um, it's like you know anything it's like some bollywood movie hollywood movie game of thrones harry potter or lord of the rings or whatever it is you know titanic or whatever a number of uh, examples i can give they all just simply waste our time and there is no benefit from reading or seeing all this it just degrades us into materialistic consciousness now, whenever I say this, then people will say, oh, no, you are wrong, you know, but that book, you know, that uh, serial, that, uh, what do you say, that web series, <laughs> that has so many nice things to teach us, you know, why can't we still read them? Well, uh, you could, but the problem with these books, novels, and, you know, these movies, this Netflix, and all this is, there will be one good thing, and there will be other hundred 
things which will pollute our consciousness okay and even if you talk of good things we can always find that from the scriptures right so we should minimize our uh, association with all this uh, stupid and idiotic you know this you know books novels or whatever you say you know all this bollywood hollywood so not very recommended okay so even if you watch it should be like very controlled and it should be very much monitored okay monitored not by you by uh, somebody who is senior and uh, more experienced than you okay so when you do this then what happens is you do not waste much time and you can use that time to do more spiritual practices later on okay which will actually benefit you uh, so therefore you have to understand that if unless somebody who is actually a devotee of lord shri ram whenever he is doing all this you know uh, nonsense acting uh, you have to understand it, it it is just like a play show okay it's uh, it's just like a normal day there's nothing so special there okay like especially for this movie adi purush you know like uh, for hanuman ji they portrayed him in like a very you know masculine or bossy way you know it's like which is, which is fine nothing wrong with it but then hanuman ji is not just a person who is very powerful you know he's his identity is not that he's a super uh, man or superhuman that's not his primary identity his primary identity was and is and will always be for eternity as the hanuman chalisa says he will always be a devotee of lord shri ram that is was and will and should be his only identity primarily and then secondly you can say he's no anjani nandan or you know he's his disciple of surya dev you can say whatever i mean he's you you could give n number of uh, uh, you you could say n thing n number of things about hanuman ji but his foremost identity he's ramdoot is it ramdoot no <laughs> he's ramdas he's sevak of lord ram okay so therefore this is the most important quality of hanuman ji and therefore if anybody who is not in a similar mood like hanuman ji tries to act like hanuman ji oh boy and that's a disaster it's like a catastrophe and we have seen what that movie has done right okay so this movie uh, enlightens us in a negative way uh, by telling us how important it is for us to seek uh, scriptural wisdom how how important it is for us to seek the association of a guru and other god brothers and god sisters within the family okay uh, in the, i mean in the spiritual family unless we do this then uh, we will we will keep going around this life we are seeing adi purush next life we will see something then next life something so we will go round and round and round in this janma janmantar chakra and we will be taking bath again and again and again but as lord krishna promises in the gita yad gatvan ani vartante taddhama paramam mama he says one who reaches my abode will not come back this is this is not my words this is lord krishna's words okay so therefore please be associated with the spiritual community do your sadhana and be wary of who you lend your ears okay all right thank you very much for your patience if you are new to the channel and you have not watched my bhagavad gita videos then please watch them and subscribe if you are new click the thumbs up if you like this video share it with your family friends and colleagues and if you want a consultation from me please go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will save you from adi purush and give you association of bona fide sadhus okay thank you very much jai shri ram <laughs>